My name's Tony and I own this 1973 BMW 2002 Touring. I've been in the motor trade all my, all my working life. I've uh, been restoring old BMWs for the last 20, 25 years. I wasn't particularly looking for a 2002. It's just uh, a sort of like a Facebook middle of the night sort of thing and this car popped up. I knew the guy who owned it. Uh, got a friend of mine to go and pick the car up. Obviously I hadn't seen the car and he picked it up come back here with the car and I've got to say it was in a sorry state it was not the car I thought it was from the pictures that I've seen but it was there I love a challenge history wise with the car I knew the previous owner had it for four years and it was garage and he had all good intention of restoring it but just didn't have the time um, he told me previously the car come from Suffolk and was on a farm for like 25 years just sitting there out in the open so you can imagine what the car was like when it came to me. Uh, the car was complete, it was part stripped. Um, there's boxes and boxes of stuff inside the car and stuff. And when it got out, I was pulling these boxes out. I've never worked on a 2002 before. I'm, I'm my history is E30s. And I'm sort of standing there, scratching my head, looking at these parts going, where does this go? Where does that go? And, but I got there eventually with some help from the guys on the 2002 forums. It was really helpful. Totally stripped it out, so it was just a rolling shell. So I knew exactly what I was up against. Um, and I was up against a lot, to be honest. So I contacted Faye and Peter, a company called Jamie Limited, who stock a lot of panels and parts of these. And also I've got a guy, Paul, at Fairfields BMW. So between the pair of them, I thought, right, let's buy all the panels first. So I went out, I bought every single panel that I needed, be it genuine or pattern. Most of them were genuine. Uh, which amazingly for a car that's nearly 50 years old, BMW is still stock genuine parts. I bought the turbo arch body kit for it, which included a front splitter as well, but I wasn't overly keen on the front splitter, so I never fitted the splitter. And that was it. So I had all the panels, and it was time to start delving in and cutting into it, and, and it just escalated. Then I found out I needed more panels, because the deeper I went, the more rust I was finding. Panel-wise, it's got a new front panel, new front wings, new front inner wing braces, new A pillars, new inner seal panels, new outer seal panels, new lower sections on the bottoms of the court panels, new inner rear tubs, new rear panel, brand new tailgate from BMW, and the final thing, he wanted a boot floor, but no one does a boot floor for a touring, so I had to buy one for a saloon, which I modified and cut and changed it to fit in the boot of this. Near enough, every panel's been changed. The doors were all right, I bought some second-hand doors. I repaired those, but I'm not happy with them. So this winter, um, it's getting brand new doors. Wheel-wise, uh, I went down the really easy, simple route. It's, done, it's been done many, many times before, which is BBR RMs. I wanted split rims. I knew the car, the, the wheels fit and all that, so I bought the wheels of a guy, pulled them right. They were eight and nine J, because I wanted them staggered, but it works out because a 15 inch wheel on a car is such a weird size, I couldn't find a tire for the perfect fitment for the nine J. So I had to buy new lips, step the rears down to eights, um, which really annoyed me because I really want to go staggered. And to do that, so I've had them refurbed, new lips, new tyres, new hardware. It's worked out they're the most expensive RMs in the whole wide world because <laughs> of all the stuff I keep changing all the time. The mirrors are not the genuine mirrors. I didn't like the genuine mirrors. I wanted to go down a bit of the hot rod thing and all that. As much as they look really good, they're useless. I can't see nothing out the near side one, absolutely nothing. And then the, the one on the driver's side, I've sort of got to sort of sink down in my seat and then kink my head over and go out and move the mirror a little bit so I can see what's going on. So now I just forget about the door mirrors. I've got the main side, or oh, I just look over my shoulders. Because you've got a lot of glass and the, the view around the car is good. So yeah, the door mirrors, yeah, they, they look good, but they're not very good. <laughs> the bumpers were shot on it. I wanted a smooth, clean look on it, and especially on the front with the proper sharp nose cut on it. 
that's the reason I didn't put the turbo front splitter on it. And I was looking at the rear, and I thought it could look good, it couldn't look, but because I've shadow lined it as well, all the chrome's gone, all the chrome trims are gone. So I've binned off the rear bumper as well. It's clean, subtle. That's what I want. Just, it, it's uncomplicated, and that's the look of it I was looking for. With my cars, I like to have coilovers or a lower suspension, but because where my garage is situated, and you can actually see, I've got a big ass curb outside. I've gone air ride with a car. I believe it's the only touring in the world, as far as we know. A lot of us done some hunting, and it's on airlift three like performance three uh, P. They don't do an off-the-shelf kit, so I spoke to Palm and Raj at um, Coral Yard Security. Spoke to them guys, and they reckon they could do a custom one. So I took the car to them while I was on a holiday. Um, yeah, and they fabbed up a kit and all that, and they got it. And uh, to be honest, I'm I'm really happy with the, with the ride. I've got an E30 on Air Ride as well, but because I've got 17s on it, and to get it so low, you've got to put so much air in it to get it to a ride height. It, it it's very it, it's very harsh. But with this, they've got they set it up so good. That I've got the car can lay on the floor, gets up to ride height. And I'm only running just under 40 psi on the bags and all that. So you, it, it just doesn't affect it and it drives really, really nice, yeah. I've hidden everything. Everything is hidden. So no one would even know that the car was on here until you look at the centre console and see a controller there. Or if the bonnet was open, you can see the tops of the legs and it's got an airlift on it and all that. I, I think anything old and slammed loads like, sitting there, I think it just looks good. You know what I mean? Whether it's a shiny car, whether it's patina, where it's a, a totally rotten Volkswagen, if they're laying on the floor, they just look cool, really cool. Originally, the car was Polaris Silver, um, and I think silver is, is not my thing. If I was just gonna restore the car back to the way it come from the factory, I would've stuck with the silver, but obviously I was going down the modified route, or resto mod, whatever you wanna call it. So I was looking at BMW colours, like a few metallics, things, and I could, just couldn't. I, I painted a couple of panels, like the arches, and offering the arches up, going, no, no. Then one day I was driving along, going to work, and a Ford RS Focus drove past me in that grey. And I thought, that is the colour. So I've done a bit of homework, found out it's Ford Stealth Grey. Even though it's a modern colour, it looks like an old colour and it suits the car so well. You know what I mean? And it, it shows the lines nice and all that. Yeah, and I, and I think, yeah, I think I made the right choice. And a lot of people agree as well. The interior was originally blue cloth with the original seats. I wanted to go down a Recaro route for the front seats. Uh, second hand BMW Recaro seats, for some reason, people want seven, eight hundred pounds for them, even if they're ruined. So a friend of mine said, why don't you try and buy some Astra Mark I GTE seats? So I went on eBay, bang, found a pair that were really good condition for hundred pounds. Then I decided, right, I've got to change the color of the trim. Obviously I didn't decide on the color of the trim until I decided on the color of the paint. I went to B Trim in Enfield, uh, spoke to John there, I know quite well. And we spent two hours just going through all these colors, through these colors. I had a color swatch of the paint, you know, that there, and he's going, no, 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 then, boom, come across this color, and both of us said, that'll work. Recovered the seats for me, all the door cards, all the boot trims, the tailgate trim. I've even had the sun visors recovered as well in leather, center console in leather. Yeah, but it took them, because of the COVID <clears throat> thing going on and all that, and they were shut for a while, so it took a year and a half to get the trim done. Carpet-wise, um, I used a company over in Kent that supplied me new underlay, new carpets, new mats, in black. Obviously, the car's never come with black, smooth carpet, which I'm happy with. It's got, it gives me, uh, let's say, a bit more of a modern look. The engine is the original two litre M10 engine. Um, I was looking to upgrade the engine and all that, but I thought with the amount of money that I'd spent on the body and the interior, I thought I'd stick with the original M10. So obviously pulled out, completely rebuilt, top to bottom. Internals all stock, 
but obviously I wanted a little bit more power out of it because they were only producing like 100, 101 brake horsepower from the factory and stuff. So I went down the route of twin 45 carburetors, which do drink a hell of a lot of fuel. <laughs> I will say that um, it's got a pipe of fast road cam in it and a one two three distributor which is mappable from your, your phone and all that and everyone raves about them so that done once the engine and thing was back in obviously it was running really rough and horrible and all that so I took it to a company called At Speed Racing they put it in a rolling road worked their magic with it so now it starts on the button uh, it starts with no choke as well because I didn't want choke cable and stuff on it because it was a fresh build, um, it had a slight little water leak and a slight oil leak, but at the time they got out 145 brake, but they said once that's all sorted, take it back to them. So that's in the plans for the winter, to go back, have another tune, maybe look at, maybe, I don't know, a lot of performance exhaust manifold and go down that sort of road, just squeeze a little bit more power out of it. But yeah, overall, yeah, I'm surprised for an M10, it does, it pulls, pulls really well, really well. Four-speed gearbox, not really good for our modern, especially not for a motorway. 60, 65 on a motorway, it's only at three grand, the car revs to an eight, it's a nice place to be. Once you get to 70, it's all noise, because it's an old car, it's got all that induction noise and exhaust noise, and the engine's like, and it's like, oh, and it's like you're turning the radio up, and up and up to the point you can't turn it up no more because it's all engine you know what i mean it's completely different well like i say i'm so used to driving e30 and e30 is a modern car compared to this five speed gearbox nicely insulated you could do 100 mile an hour in a in an e30 and it's still a nice place to be this is a completely different beast honestly it really is but i love it, it puts a smile on my face tailgate I didn't want to give 500 pound for a second hand tailgate it's 50 years old and it's probably got 50 years worth of paint and filler and god knows where else in it and I, I really did think that I wouldn't find a good decent tailgate that was the last piece of the puzzle everything else was easy um, you can buy genuine front wings for it as well but uh, they're not 550 pound aside but I was told they don't fit so I went to Jay Nick and I said do you do patent wings I went yes and it was like 120 130 quid um, a perfect fit, so I went down our route. But going back to the tailgate, I spoke to Paul at Fairfield to BMW. Obviously he was been supplying me parts for the car already. Um, and I said, right, I want a tailgate for the car. So he's there, you can hear him like, and he's thinking, he said, uh, yeah, it's showing six available. And I was like, what, six? Are you mad? And he went, yeah, six. And I was like, well, how much is it? And he went, it's like, then 900 quid. And I was like, oh God, I said, I've got to have it, I've got to have it. So bang, ordered it three days later, had a brand new tailgate, because it's got the twin headlight conversion on it, uh, which it come with, but the headlights were trash. So I tried everywhere. I just could not get headlamps. So there's a firm that specializes in automotive lamps. So I took the main beam, the dip beam with me, to can you, find me these headlamps. They said, leave it with us, we'll see what we can do. A week later, got a phone call, yes, we can supply you brand new headlights. So I was like, wow, just order them, don't care how much they're gonna cost. But then I needed the rings to, to hold the lamps to the back end. Works out, E9 headlights of the same size. So spoke to Port Fairfields again, said, can you get me the E9 metal rings there? And he went, yeah, I can get them, you know what I mean? So, and that was it. But barring that, everything else, yeah, nothing is, nothing is an issue at all. Um, the badges on the car, uh, you cannot get for love and money. You can buy plastic ones, I didn't want plastic. So it's a guy, John Beamer, uh, on Instagram, Facebook. He makes them from scratch to your design. They're enamel, they're metal based and all that. They're expensive, but well worth it. But yeah, barring that, everything you want for this car, is available. 
putting the car back together again because I've never done one. Obviously I could buy all the parts and I just found that, that there were some things with the car were, uh, were over-engineered for, for reason. It's like the braking system, yeah? It's got um, four pop calipers from the factory on solid brake discs, which I didn't understand. But it's got this twin brake pipe system, like a, uh, like a Range Rover. It's got twin servos. It's got a servo for the front brakes and a servo for the rear brakes. And it's just a lot of mess going on in the en engine bay. And originally I was going to keep it all, um, but I spoke to a few people and they said, bin the servos off, be a man, stand on the brake pedal a little bit harder. And it tidies up, you get a rid of so much mess and brake pipes. So I've gone for single pipes for everything now, I've converted all that, I've done that. Um, James from JFI does a conversion where you can put an E30 brake master cylinder on it. So I bought the conversion kit, bolted that on it, so it gives you a bit more pressure when you're on the brakes and all that. There's still, when you're driving the car, you, you've, you've got to think ahead all the time because the brakes work and they break good, but they don't break as good as a car with a servo. You know what I mean? So you've really got to like pull up on the steering wheel, push down on the brake pedal if something pulls out on you. So it does get a little bit sketchy like that. The car's purpose isn't to enjoy it. I do car shows, I do car meets and stuff. It gets driven everywhere. It's, it's not a trailer queen, so it does get driven as all my cars do. It's, it's predominantly shows, you know what I mean? Uh, uh, we've got a big circle of us, all BMW guys. It's such a good social thing with the shows. You go away for weekends and stuff like that. If, it, if it's a sunny day, I've got nothing to do. Yeah, I'll grab the missus, we'll jump in it, go for a spin, have a bit of lunch somewhere, that's it, and bring the car back. But you're pulling the car apart, people come out of it, oh mate, look at this car. And yeah, but it, it is good, it is good, yeah. The wife, is, is she doesn't quite like the attention it gets when you're driving down a motorway people are bibbing and taking and giving you thumbs up and she's like sinking down into the seat like, I don't know, no, what is this? <laughs>
So where I work, I work for a company called Westfire Coachworks and all that. And I, and I spoke to my boss and I said like, if, if I take the car into work, because it's gonna fall right behind, I really want the car done for 2021. I started in 2018. So he said, yeah, bring it into work. So I thank Peter for that. Um, and then I had guys, um, obviously Danny, Rob, um, Tony, and John. Um, they helped doing the bodywork on the car. Ordinarily, I do everything myself. So they helped and they pushed it along for me until I had my operation. So then I was off work for three months and then I was back on it again. And then the car was there, then I could steam back into it again. Uh, much disgust to the wife, because she goes, you shouldn't be doing anything, you're gonna do your back in again and all that. So, yeah, so I've got to thank them guys. They, they really did help, so, yeah. Otherwise, it wouldn't have been done. It would, it would have gone on until next year and stuff like that. So I've got to thank them guys. Oh, would I do it differently? No, I, I don't think I would. The, the, only, the only change, I want to do it, and I have got planned, is the running gear, is engine gearbox diff. Um, I want to go a more modern route. I have a plan in my head, which, the, not, the, I suppose the purists, because the purists probably, what I've already done, they'd hate it, you know what I mean? But from the feedback I've got, they don't hate it, because I saved the car, because it was scrap. Um, I'm, I'm gonna go down a modern route, but I'm not gonna say what it is at the moment. Yeah, it's, it's only a couple of people I know, and a couple of people were a bit shocked from what I said, because it, it's, all I say, it's not German. So that's, that's, that's all I'm gonna say. I'll, I'll just think the, the, the overall build has come out better than what originally what I thought. You know, I mean, obviously things have changed as I was going along building it and all that. And, and I just think, as they, they like they say, I, I bit the nail on the head. And, and with it being a touring, there are tourings out there. I know of about half a dozen on the road. They're all stock cars. That, all right, they might have like uh, coilovers and maybe a change of wheels and stuff, but they're stock cars. You will not see another one of these modified. I, I would think not in the UK and as far as I know, like looking around the world, because they only produced 25,000 of these cars. They was only built for a short time, two and a half, three years. Um, they're a rare car, a really rare car. And I think that's what the attraction is from people and stuff. They see it and you do get people standing there because I'll go out, I've got a pal of mine, Smithy, he's got a saloon and we normally go together to places. So you've got bootlid and hatchback and you get people standing there and they're like they, they just stare at it and they're like wow and they, they're looking a bit confused um there was there's one little story from uh, retro rides where i wasn't with the car and someone messaged me and said there's a guy two guys standing next to your car discussing it and they think it's a cut and shut because they've never seen a 2002 of a tailgate before and it that did make me chuckle it did make me chuckle